Hey, DJ, how are you? Hey, Dr. A, how are you? Hey, Joanne, we see you. How are you? Hey, honeybee, long time no I love like saying you guys' name before you like <laughs> hop on. Hey, hair angel, how are you? Good, good, good. Shaletta, I see you. Hello from Turkey. Hallelujah. I pray you guys had a good day today. I pray all is well. We're going to kind of hop right in. <clears throat> yeah, long time no see. Long time no see. Good, good. No complaints. Hey, Lenora. Hey, Lenora. Crystal, we see you. Hallelujah. Hey, India, how are you doing today? How was your day today? I pray your day was good. Greetings and salutations, hallelujah, from this side of glory. Hello, T. Roses. Hallelujah. Hey, Rosie Posey, how are you doing? How was your day today? Guys, get your pen and your paper. Hey, Chastity, we're going to be in Judges <clears throat> chapter 18 today. So, I know, right? So, for those of you guys, hey, pen pal. Hey, Cody, how are you? Hey, Miss Bridget from Chicago. I pray you guys are ready to jump in. Um, bear down. Hey, Testimony 2. Testimony 2, type your name in, please, so um, our family can say what's up to you. So I pray that yesterday's teaching, hey, sister, has got you thinking. How many of you guys had heard the prophetic narrative of Micah and the Levite? before. Hey sister, how are you doing in the building? How many of you guys have heard that before? And here's the thing. This is free space. This is free space. We are, we sometimes hear the same chapters and the same scriptures preached over and over and there's nothing wrong with that. You know why? Because every time you read a passage of scripture, there's more uh, revelation to be dug out. There's, there's, there's no, we could study the same verse of scripture for 365 days and we will get a deeper revelation as we pray into it and as we walk it out in obedience right right and so this is giving us a clear picture of when we talk about what's going on around the world around us and understanding our role and us understanding the urgency of our uh identity the urgency of our identity so yesterday is where we're kind of laying, laying the groundwork because everybody, for the most part, said that they had heard or they've read, heard preach or they've read the narrative of the Levite who had to cut up his concubine or he cut up his concubine into 12 pieces and sent her every, a piece to each of the 12 tribes, right? Listen, if you have never heard, hey, sister, if you have never heard this before, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So we're just digging through the scripture and we're finding God. Yeah, and this is and that's where we're leading to. We need to find out how did the church, when I say the church, because we have to, hey sister, because we have to understand the parallel, right? God is speaking. He's the same God. There's nothing new under the sun. And so if we follow the path, we can find out where we are in the path and we can find our role and responsibility in the path. And then we can understand, yeah, we're going to get there probably by tomorrow. So today we're still kind of dealing with Micah, Micah situation. So remember, so this is a quick recap. Judges chapter 17. If you do have no idea what we're talking about, quick recap, but you need to go and read it for yourself. So this is a time where there is no king in Israel. Uh, there's no, there's no judge. There's no king. There's no judge, right? But there are still Levites. There are still people who are positioned who have been consecrated by God. That would, that would be you and I. Even when a seat looks vacant, God has consecrated. Um, I hope you guys got your pen and paper because we didn't already start it. God has consecrated us. And so a lot of times we think that we need to be sitting in the seat in order for us to be functioning in our consecration, for us to be functioning in our role, that the reason why we're poured out into the earth and how we're supposed to move and ebb and flow in the things of God and what that means. And we're going to get into that today. And so uh, Micah took 1,100 pieces of silver from his mother and then he restored it back to her. And she was like, Micah, this is the Anise version. She's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, my son. I have wholly dedicated, this is the book, I, verse 5, I have wholly dedicated the sum of money to the Lord to make you 
a graven image and a molten image. And so when she says the Lord, it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. We're talking about Jehovah. So she says to her son, I have wholly, whole part, all of it is dedicated to the Lord, comma, so I can make you a graven image and a molten image. And so he restores it back. She takes 200 pieces of silver and she makes a graven image and a molten image. This is one of the only places, if you're a scholar and you're just like, I love the Bible. This is the only one of the places in the Bible where it removes molten and graven. Because usually it just says idols or it says graven image or molten image. Here it specifies hewed out idol and then melt it down the gold silver whatever is melted down and then an idol is shaped in the melted softened um metal and so she takes 200 pieces of silver she makes an, a graven image and a molten image and these are his house gods so then micah has house gods and he makes an ephod <laughs> and then he has a teraphim which is another word for house god so it says house God like three times. He makes an ephod and then he consecrates one of his own sons to be a priest out of order and every which way. Here comes a priest down with me so far. Here comes a Levite from Bethlehem, Judah, and he's looking for basically to be hired. And so he happens upon Micah's house. Micah's like, listen, who are you? He's like, I'm a Levite. Micah's like, what? He's like, listen. I'm going to hire you. I'm going to give you 10 pieces of silver, a change of clothes, and your victuals, which is your bread and water, your daily necessities. And you're going to be my Levite. So then Micah consecrates the Levite. And so if you're confused, it's because they were confused. And so we talked about the roles. We talked about where to find ourselves in the scripture. And it's very it's very important to understand this is the foundation of how we get to the state of the tribe of Benjamin and the war against Israel and Benjamin. Okay, very important. And so we have to understand we have a role in the state of our nation. We have a role in the state of our world. We have a role. And so even if we feel like, you know, I don't know what they doing over there. I don't know what they doing over there. Blah, 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 blah. If you don't fully understand your identity, right, then you will not be functioning in your consecration. And when you're not, this is what happens. Evil progresses. The strong man gets stronger. And when it's time to put the strong man out, there are casualties, this is important to remember. We're not talking about nations that don't know God. We're not talking about nations that were not um, hand chosen, hand picked by God. This is us. All right. Was that a good recap? I'm trying to stay. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep it under an hour. I don't want to keep y'all on here all day. All right. So we're in Judges chapter 18. Do you have your pen and your paper? And your Bible, because I want you reading this. Because everything I just said sounds really cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But this is, the, this is scripture. All right. So I think we started with, let's start with verse 2. Because verse 1 just says there's no king in Israel and that everybody was doing what they wanted to do. Verse 2. And the children of Dan. Yep, Judges chapter 18. Thank you, sister. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coasts, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtol. These are coastal cities. These are coastal setups. Remember, Dan is on the hunt for some more land. They're on the hunt for some, something to call their inheritance, okay? And they told the five to spy out the land and to, from each part to spy out land and to search it. And they sent it to them. Go search the land. And when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. Remember this last night. So essentially they go in, they hear the, the voice of the priest, the Levite. They're like, hey, we know your voice. What are you doing here? Why are you here? The Levite, he says to them, Micah hired me. This is what happened, such and such, and thus and thus. All right. Are y'all with me? 
verse five. So the men who were sent to spy out the land, they're going to inquire of the Levite. The Levite is still consecrated for the use of God, even though he's operating outside of his functioning because he, he hired himself out and now he is a priest in a house that has gods. Ten Commandments. We shall not have any images, any idols of anything in heaven or in the earth. So here it is. A consecrated Levite is a priest in a house that has graven images, molten images of fake ephod and teraphim. All right. But here's the thing. He's still functioning because this is God is setting the stage. We're going to see the grace of God, but we're also, we're going to see the grace of God and the long suffering of God, but we're going to see the grace of God and how he pulls us back in and makes us because the providential will will pull us back in and make us get on board. Even when there's casualties involved, right? All right. So let's just read so we can see. And they said unto him, ask him counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, go in peace before the Lord is your way, before, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. I'm in the King James Version, clearly. All right, this is where it gets good. Y'all with me, verse 7. Then the five men departed and came to Lish. And they saw the people were therein, that they dwelt careless. Circle this. After the, after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. Circle that. Careless, quiet, and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land. Circle that that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians, which would have been their neighbors, and they had no business with any man. Verse eight, we're gonna go back to verse seven. It's our concentration verse. Verse eight. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshtol, and they said unto their brethren, what say ye? And the brethren, the five, the spies, they said, Arise that we go up against them, for we have seen the land. And behold, it is very good. Are you still, meaning, are you just going to sit there? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come into a people secure. Circle that. And to a large land, for God has given it unto your hands. A place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. So I need you to get the picture. So here it is. The five spies, have, or the five from each, have spied out the land. And they bring back a report, right? Because the priest, who's, who's a hireling, he still has the... Now, you notice how the Bible is not calling him Levite anymore. Did y'all catch that? When he rolls up to Micah, the Bible says Levite. When they inquire of him inside of the providential will of God, the Bible calls him priest, right? So we, when, we, when we understand the functioning of the temple, Levites and priests, though they are of the same lineage, they have different functionings, okay? So here it is. They inquire of him. He says, go. God has given it to you. They get to a land that is large. Hey, sister. They get to a land that is secure, they get to a land where there are no neighbors. But I need you to go back up to verse 7. I need you to go back to verse 7. This land fell prey. Are y'all with me? This land fell prey because, go to the C part. Quiet and secure, comma, or semicolon. So this is, this is telling you why the land was quiet and secure. I need y'all to catch this. The semicolon is giving you the definition of what was before it. So the land was only quiet and secure because there was no magistrate. There was no magistrate in the land 
that might put them to shame. Okay? There is a, there was not a magistrate in the land to hold them accountable for having restraint. When we talk about intercessors, what is the word I throw around all the time? You are a magistrate. And a magistrate, when you see that word ambassador in the New Testament, it is the same word in Hebrew for magistrate, right? But here's the thing. This is great about this word here. Y'all follow me? Tell me if I'm, if I'm going too fast because I need to, I need to kind of flesh this out. When we see magistrate in the scripture right here, it's not a noun. It's a verb. So he, they're not saying there was no magistrate, right? A person, place, or a thing. They're talking about functioning of action. In Hebrew, transient verbs have the action that does not have to be uh, have an object, meaning a noun, meaning the object will be tied to the function. And so it's what, this, what this scripture is saying is that there was no action of magistration. And so the people there were quiet and secure. They were fat and happy. They had no need of anything. That's what the scripture said. Let me give you the Hebrew for magistrate. And I've given it to you before, but I need you to see this. There wasn't any activity. When we talk about intercessors, right? Where are the intercessors at? We need to pray. We need to pray the will of heaven. We need to pray the will of God. We pray and we pray and pray, 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 pray. And God is saying, you're, you're functioning in the wrong realm. You cannot magistrate in heaven. You take the authority, ambassador, New Testament, you take the authority as a governmental agent and you exact or exact law where there is lawlessness. I pray y'all see this. Do y'all see this? Y'all see this? This is, this is going to be deeper intercession. This is what intercession with identity looks like. If you're taking notes, I must intercede according to the knowledge of my identity. I can no longer pray and think I'm interceding. There's a difference. There's a difference. To intercede means to intercept, right? So let me give you the words. Are y'all ready? Let me know you're ready. You ready? It's Strong's word. Three, four, two, three. I want you to look this up for yourself. Three, four, two, three. Zero, three, four, two, three. Y'all rush. Are you ready? I'm going to go over the words probably three times. When you intercede to keep the land, to when you intercede, to ensure that the kingdom which has been built, that the reign of God, the domain of God, the providential will of God does not move. So in other words, we're not to be moving about in the earth always on the defensive. You're right. Are y'all ready? To occupy. To drive out the previous tenants. That's what your prayers do. To drive out the previous tenants. To seize. To inherit and to expel. To impoverish. I need you to see this. So when there is a system that is demonic and diabolical, you bring the order of God, which is the mind of God, 
which is the will of God, providential will of God, and you impoverish that system. Are y'all with me? To ruin. To ruin. To cast out. There was not magistration. There was not casting out in the land. Do y'all see this? To destroy. To disinherit. So when a principality moves in and inherits, takes over, we disinherit them. We disinherit that principality. To dispossess. To drive out. To expel without fail. I am not making this up. This is what the Hebrew word means. So I want you to look it up for yourself. To expel without fail. To make poor. To seize. To succeed utterly. To devour. That, my friend, is the picture of intercession by identity. Do y'all see this? God did not move and kick them out himself. So evil prevailed in the land because the people did not magistrate. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. So there was no king in the land, but there were Levites and priests who were consecrated. It's 03423. Do y'all need me to go over the words again? Y'all need me to go over the words again? Because I know I'm going fast. Y'all need me to go over the words again? When I understand that I've been built with a sound that impoverishes principalities, it changes how I pray. Yes, okay. You ready? Let me know when you're ready. It's Strong's word, 03423. I'm trying not to get happy and start yelling at you, everybody, because I'm not trying to yell. Okay. To seize. When you open your mouth, you lay hold of that which is not supposed to be there. When you speak the word with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, you take possession of that which is supposed to belong to the kingdom, but has been the kingdom of heaven, but has been handed over to the kingdom of hell. The act of magistration. Even though I just kind of made that word up, but we're just going to put I-O-N on it. All right, my phone. Okay. All right. To impoverish. To take possession of. To disinherit. To occupy. To impoverish. Come to poverty and be poor. To impoverish, come to poverty, and then be poor. To devour. To cause, to possess, or inherit. The kingdom should be making traction because you are here. The kingdom of heaven should be making traction because I am here. We should not be on the defense. Are y'all ready? To dispossess. To destroy. To bring to ruin. To seize. To succeed. To expel without Fail. Hey, sister. 
to expel without fail. This is amazing. This is this kind of where we get stuck tonight. Because whether or not I get it, whether or not I acknowledge it, whether or not I move in it, whether or not I exercise it, this is the mandate of functioning in kingdom identity in the earth. Is the kingdom moving forward in your sphere, in your territory of being a magistrate? We look at things that are going on. We see things that are going on. And we talk to God about it. We complain to God about it. We bellyache to God about it. We get with some other intercessors. We complain about it. We bellyache about it. We may pray about it a little bit. But what when we walk through the territory, do we understand and see ourselves as the ruling and governing power? The magistrate comes in the force and under the force of the kingdom that sent it. So we're not moving in our own power. We're not functioning in our own grace, but we've been sent. We've been mantled. And now the expectation of glory. Am I yelling at y'all? Because this is good to me. And so here it is. They're going crazy. God has brought them out. God has brought them in. God has settled his people and they go in nuts. God could have easily, you know, sent something and, you know, caused them to get back on track. But he, he was waiting for his people who were consecrated to function and move in their identity. Because there was no magistration in the land, the, the, the land and the people were like, oh, we good. Oh, woe unto you. Come here, Ezekiel. Watchman who sees and does not tell the people. You see what is coming and you do not magistrate. Right? And so here it is. There's a people who have a big land. If you read the scripture, they have no want. They are good. They are living life. All is well. And God was like, listen, Dan, y'all need some more land. I'm going to take you up by Micah, Micah's house. And there you're going to meet a priest. The priest is going to give you the go ahead. And you're going to upset that which feels like it's in comfort, that which is comfortable, that which is God. God has been God. He does not change. Lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Right? Hot or cold. Micah, you got an ephod and you got house gods. Are y'all seeing this? Hot or cold, you got a made up ephod and you have house gods because this was handed to you. This is what everybody is doing. Clearly, this is not unnormal. His mom is like, I've dedicated this money to, to the Lord to make you a molten image and a graven image. And so now we're seeing a people who is right outside of where Micah is and they're getting ready. Their whole land is getting ready to be upset. So I'm a, I'm a, I want you to read it. You know, I want you to read the rest of the chapter, but I'm just going to kind of tell you, give you the Anise version. So the, uh, they, they come back and they say to the priest, hey, it's getting ready to go down. They was like, listen, why don't you be, and I, I want you to pull up the scripture because we're going to see, we're going to see in a minute what happens when there's no magistration in the land. They say to the priest, hey, why don't you come and be the priest over all of us instead of being the priest over one? Why don't you come and be a priest instead of being a priest over one? And so the Levite's like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Right. And so in the end, the land is taken and the, the land that's upset. They're like, Micah, this is all your fault. We shut up. We should kill you. We should kill your whole family. Don't say anything to us. I want you to go down to the last verse. Verse 31. Nope. I want you to go to verse 29. 
So they overcame this territory and they called the name of the city Dan after the, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born into Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. Verse 30. And the children of Dan did what? The children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of captivity of the land. And they set up whose gods? So they took Micah's ephod. They took his gods out of his house. And here it is. God has given them the land and they set up Micah's graven image which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. So the graven images were where? In the house of God. So we're seeing the plan of God being set up. Because even though God is upsetting them, they're not getting it. They're not getting it. They're moving and they're trucking with God and they're still not getting it. There's such mixture because of the lack of magistration, the function of magistrate, the function of dispossession, the function of disinheriting, the function of impoverishing, principality, come on, and mixture. Jesus, I pray you see this. And so we, we see the progression. We see the progression, right? Into what we're going to talk about tomorrow. And there's casualties. We have the family of Israel fighting against itself so much that we almost lose a whole tribe. The progression of something that looks so small, a house God. His mama took 200 pieces of silver and she made a little bitty God and he put him in his house. And then we get all the way to Judges chapter 19 and 20 and we almost lose a whole tribe. Whole tribe almost wiped out. And so a little bit of evil, a little bit of leaven, a little bit of rottenness. This makes sense. A little bit. No, she she paid the person who made the graven images. She paid the person who made the graven images. A little bit, a little bit. Almost wiped out a whole tribe. Are y'all seeing this? This is not nations who are not called. Who, who don't know the name of God. I need y'all to understand the weight of this. This is not a people who were, who were heathens or Gentiles. This is his people. This is God's people. These are the people called by his name. These are the people he brought out. These are the people that he rolled with. These are the people that he kept in the wilderness. These are the people. These are his people. And they're mixing and they're mingling and they, they're, they're whoring after other gods. And so when you read the chapters for tomorrow, we find that the concubine of, hey man of God, the concubine of the Levite, I want you to read it before we come together, she did some whoring. It's a picture of what's going on in the nation. Right? So what is God saying to us? So last night... God was talking to us about the mica in our lineage, the mica in our mind, the mica in our hearts. Where is our idolatry that we're hollowing up to God saying, God bless it? What have we consecrated out of order? Who has consecrated us out of order? Right? Where is there a mixture? What are we idolizing? Even if you're idolizing, we talked about this last night, even if you're idolizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if you're idolizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you're, that's pride. You're not looking to magnify the name of God. You're, look, you're looking to magnify the name of self. So you have become your own God. 
So where is there a mixture? Where are we using the things of God and making it into incantations and causing those things to become witchcraft itself because of our mindset? Here it is. He got an ephod. He done made a whole entire ephod and consecrated his son, right? And so tonight, God is saying, we look at the Micah and the Levite from last night, right? Levite, consecrated position. Don't leave your position. The consecration of God is upon you when he poured you into the earth, right? Don't be lusting for something that anybody can elevate you to anything where you're not doing nothing, but you're really uh, fortifying the hand of the enemy in the region, in the territory. You're working with the enemy while you call on the name of God. You're in agreement with the enemy, but you're saying, God, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But you're really in cahoots with the enemy. You're making it worse. We're making it worse because of our motives, because of the, because of the idolatry or not understanding our identity and our functioning where we become a hireling, where God has placed consecration upon us. I pray y'all see this. And so tonight, what is God saying? God is saying to you and I, where is the magistration in the land? Because there's a cry to heaven about where is the hand of God. There is a ton of intercessors who are sighing and saying God is tarrying. God is not tarrying if you were here. Right? Where's the power of God? You. Where is the word of God? You. Where is the demonstration of God? You. And the more that we are docile and dormant and we don't understand the identity of intercession called magistrate to execute law where there is lawlessness. Now, when you talk about law, Anis, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Grace is a law, the law of grace. So when we talk about the law, we're, talk, we're not talking about the Old Testament law. We're talking about the domain. Kingdom is the domain and reign of the kingdom. It is the mind of God of how kingdom is to function in the earth. It is the mind of God how man is to function in the earth. It is the providential plan of God over the earth and mankind. Who will go for us, so to speak. And so where we are, right, do we understand the weight of magistrate? What is popping off because we have not opened our mouth and begin to dispossess it? Because we have not showed up to begin to dispossess it, to disinherit it, to impoverish it. Do you understand that? So we talk about all the time, you know, the zip code you live in, it is not by coincidence. Uh, the people you go to work with is not by co coincidence. You are the magistrate. What sickness and disease is in your territory and it's not supposed to be there because the bomb of healing and wholeness should be saturating the land. That through God, through you praying the prayers that God put on, put on the inside. Let me say this. Let me say, let me back up a little bit. Listen, listen, the plan and the sound of prayer and intercession was loaded into you because the plan and the sound of intercession is attached to our assignments in the earth. God knows where he positioned you. God knows where he called you. And inside of that positioning and that call, I, I pray y'all are with me. I, I, let me know if I'm going too fast. Inside of that positioning and that call is the impartation of intercession. It is the impartation. So the Holy Spirit, he, we don't know how we ought to pray. And so he pulls out of us what God imparted. Intercession is not an office and intercession is not a gift it is a mandate and so while you're flowing 
in and with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you are always magistrate and ambassador. And so when you understand, when I understand that when we open our mouths, when you open your mouths and you decree, it is, it is the form, it is the continuation of the sound of intercession. Intercession is more than what we think it is. Magistrate is one of the words for intercession, for prayer. And that means to go and to make sure to check the territory for any broken kingdom laws. I pray this is making sense. Is this, is this a lot? I pray this is making sense. So when we say things like, is my prayer enough? When we say things like, I don't pray like them. When we allow the enemy to say things to us like, well, your prayers don't get through and blah, 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 blah. You are really in an identity crisis. That's what you're in. You're in an identity crisis. And so you're all over the place, right? Let me, how can I explain this? How can I explain this? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Identity crisis. I seen princes walking as paupers, right? Alongside Poppers are peasants who are riding on horses that belong to the princes. This is Proverbs. We got an identity crisis. If you see a bailiff sitting on the bench as the judge and the judge sitting and standing as the bailiff. Identity crisis. And so we have to understand that it doesn't matter the sound of your prayer. Yes, so you are a magistrate. And we have to understand, this is not like, oh, you cute, you a magistrate, oh, boo, you cute. No, this is a weighty mandate. This land fell. And there was blood on somebody's hands. Because there was no magistrate. They dwelt in safety and they were quiet because there was no magistrate to hold them accountable. To say, uh-uh, this is crazy. This is not kingdom. What you doing is not kingdom. This is not God. Do you understand this? And so when we understand why our prayers are being attacked so much, when you understand why your voice, right? If you're like me, and I know there's a lot of people out here who are just like me, and that's why I tell my stories. I had a dream last night, but I'm not going to tell it because it's weird. And you've had dreams and you've, and, and, and you've had patterns in your life. Hey, sister, you've had patterns in your life where your voice is continuously choked out. Continue, you have dreams and, 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 and your sound can't get out. You, you praying and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, what is this? You have to understand because it is the sound of heaven bringing. And do y'all see this? And so I need you to see it. What is, this is what it is. Imagine heaven is this huge scroll in heaven, not heaven. In heaven, in glory. And we know that there are abodes, there are domains in glory. Glories, anyway. These huge scrolls, I just need you to see them. And so the scrolls almost look like, when you unfold them, you know how like, like carpet is folded up? It looks like a scroll. All right. But when you pull it, it's, it's like red. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're just going to go there with our imagination. So there's this whole big scroll, like carpet, like a red carpet. Prepare ye a highway, right, for the king. So there's this big scroll. What happens is, it's huge. I need y'all to see this. It's in glory. It's huge. And so you, we all take our little bitty piece, because it's huge. And we walk it into the earth. 
Y'all see this? And so the scroll is the word of heaven. It is the domain of heaven. It is the thoughts of God. It is the decree of God and it's preparing a highway for his majesty. And so what happens is when I say we take our corner and we pull, that means whatever your function is in the kingdom, because it's all of us functioning, how we function and who we are and how God <laughs> consecrated us when we have our little piece of this huge red carpet. And so for those of us who roll in certain gifts and functioning. I'm just going to be real with you. Can I just be 100 with y'all? Because I know, you, I mean, I ain't trying to, I'm trying to, I ain't got nothing to hide and I'm not going to try to lie to you. I teach so heavy and thorough on decrees because this is one of them. This has been one of the places of my greatest struggle. One was getting my mouth under control. Because the enemy was constantly using my mouth to curse what God had blessed. It's one thing when a man, when somebody else is cursing what God has blessed and you get you like, you can't curse what God has blessed. But it's another thing when the enemy can get you to curse what God has blessed. So you cursing yourself. So I did that for a long time. Because I was so broken, because I needed so much deliverance. Here it is. I'm in the house of God and I am an intercessor. That's why I can say. If you are struggling with faith, if you are struggling with deliverance, sit down and deal with your struggle because the enemy will box you into a corner. I'm just, I'm just, we just don't let it all hang out. Come here, Levite and Micah. Oh, Anise, you have the word of the Lord. Oh, Anise, prophet, 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 you got the word of the Lord. And I'm saying, I don't. I'm struggling with keeping the word of God about me in my own mouth. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. And because I'm struggling and you're validating my brokenness, well, then I must get healed by functioning in something I'm not ready to function in. And so it's good to you because come here, Levite. I need y'all to see this. Come here, Levite. They're consecrated you, Mike has consecrated you, but still God uses you when the Danites come. Because the use of the kingdom that's been imparted into you is not regulated to how you feel and what you're doing. If it is a providential will of God moment, baby, you, you could be the biggest liar, but you can prophesy to the bullseye. And then you will go home. And your house will be dark. And your mind will be dark. And the depression will be real. And the demonic will come meet you in your dreams. And so if you're a leader, I, I can't stress this enough. If you're a leader, you know, notice I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about gifts. I'm not talking about offices. I'm talking about prayer and intercession because this is what keeps us rock solid and whatever the gifting is. You're not going to smell yourself if you stay in prayer. We got to know, we got to stop needing warm, warm bodies. We got to stop just wanting, wooing warm bodies so we can say our ministry is bigger. No, come be with us, but when you're with us, just sit down and soak it in. You ain't got to pray for nobody. There is no, expe the expectation is for you to get free. So when I'm, ta when I'm saying certain things, I am not coming up with this stuff out of, because I read it in a book. I'm giving you what I lived. Right? So this is not everybody's story. This is just my story. So um, this is not everybody's story. Okay? So we all have our little piece. Right? We all have our little piece. And so for the people who move in the speaking gifts and the charisma of the Holy Spirit, 
your voice is what God will use to draw people. The enemy doesn't want you to get near the people. Because it's not the it's not the glory of your of your lifestyle. It's not the holiness of your lifestyle. It is the weight of his glory upon the impartation in your DNA when he released you. And so you'll all come this I'm this is I'm speaking to a specific group. So you're always going to be warring with I'm not good enough, with I'm not holy enough, with I'm not pray enough. You're always going to war with it. You're always going to war with it. And I'm not going to ugly cry. And this is just something that you're going to have to know when you understand your identity. Baby, this comes along with it. The enemy's always going to talk to you about you have no right to open your mouth and anything to anybody and you're not really you're not doing anything but it's always going to be this it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough what I'm doing it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough and so he's getting you to move in your own strength there's no strength upon your strength there's no strength upon your own voice there's no glory upon your own voice it's his glory And so with the enemy, when, you, when, when you're like, yes, God, yes, God, and, you know, you got in this place, and, and he's, he's, he's dealing with you, and you're still going through, and you're like, God, this, and you got your little peace, then he's always going to be trying to choke out your sound. You're not good enough, and people constantly validating you're not good enough. you felt like you're overlooked and you and you rolling with you know I'm, I, I we, we were laughing about it what the week before or uh, maybe it was this week I don't know what day of the week it is um, I go into places and people don't even speak I'm it's almost like you're invisible I understand now this comes with the territory because I understand that the enemy, remember what's hunting you and what's haunting you, rejection, rejection. And so once you get over that, hey, you ain't got to acknowledge me. I'm good. Let me get in and out. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Listen, I'm the biggest plagiarizer there is. All of this is plagiarism. The Holy Spirit wrote it. The Holy Spirit spoke it. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I am plagiarizing the Holy Spirit. It is not my word. So I'm not looking for people to hang around and get my uh, autograph. Because if I autograph anything, I'm, I need to autograph it. Holy Spirit. Right? So here it is. You, you've got whatever your gift is. And so, you know, the enemy will try to, you know, uh, you'll have dreams where you're being choked. You'll have dreams where you can't get your, if you're a preacher, you're a preacher. You'll notice when you start, you know, accepting your call, you'll have dreams where you, you'll be standing and it's time to preach and you cannot get your voice out. You cannot get out. You're using all of your breath. You're using all of your strength. And it's just, it's like, uh, over and over and over and over and over. Right. But then in, in waking in this dimension of life, it'll be roadblock after roadblock block after roadblock that really deal with your identity. The preaching is a function. Pastoring is an office. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. Your identity is such. So that fighting to pull, to bring the kingdom, to bring the kingdom, that's why you get fought so hard. That's why you get fought so hard when it's time to fast. That's why you get fought so hard, you know, when it's time to do your functioning. Right? You know, I had this dream I'm not going to go into because it's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. We're not, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. But I'm going to say this, this magistrate word, 
the sound and the power of the strength of heaven coming into the earth out of the mouths of God's people is happening right now. There is a strong word. Even if you whisper it, even if you, I'm not talking about you going around yelling at people. That's weird. That's super weird. That's weird, right? Um, but God, and certainly if you have struggled with decrees, when I say I struggle, I have struggled with declarations and decrees. I'm, I'm not lying. I would, I would have first notebooks filled and filled and filled. I mean, it was too many decrees. I mean, it was, I would have been there all day reading decrees. That was crazy. I have them taped up all around the house. Still won't say them. Just anytime things will happen, I deal with the warfare inwardly. Still not say. But when you pray, you could you can pray down the mind of God. But you're not opening your mouth and releasing constantly, releasing, releasing, releasing. What happens when you're opening your mouth and you're just releasing the sound of heaven, the domain of God, the reign of God? And so what happens is we always find ourselves going back into crisis, right? We find ourselves bouncing back off onto the defensive. When the kingdom, when the kingdom that overrules and overshadows the earth should be blanketing the earth, especially our sphere of influence, we should be gaining ground daily. We should be gaining ground daily. There is, you know, and I'm, I'm praying, I'm just going to release this prophecy. If you are, you know, um, hey, sister, um, if you are taking notes, <clears throat> there is such, and I hate to use this word. I, I just do because other people have taken the word, other cultures, but it is what it is. It belongs to God first. There is such an awakening. And the awakening is bringing the shaking. I don't know if you guys had any uh, calling dreams last night. I don't know if you had any dreams last night. I feel like when, before the scope got started, when we were, you know, just saying, yes, Lord, just saying, yes, Lord. There is a shaking with this awakening and it's going to shake you awake. And God is going, is bringing you into a deeper, a deeper, uh, an experience expanding view of kingdom, his mind, and you, and mankind. There is an understanding where there just seems to be, um, there's, let me just say how I feel it. Um, there's a group of people who feel like you have been in transition forever. You have been transitioning forever. And even in your, your spiritual life, even in whatever, however you function, whatever you do, you do it with a level of, you know, success. You do it with a level like you killing it to the naked eye. But really within you, you feel kind of dull because there's another place. And you feel like you've been trying to get to this other place for a really, really long time. You've really been trying to get to this, this, this other place in God, this other place in, and maneuvering in the earth. You feel the urgency, but it feels like you have been going around the mountain over and over and over and over and over and over. And it's like, you got the revelation. It's like you're Caleb and Joshua. You got the revelation. You're not faltering in your faith, but it's like this transition has been forever. Spiritual, I'm talking about spiritual transition. And so you're almost bored. Even though you're praying, even though you, you know, may be preaching, even though, you know, you may be discovering, you may be still in a modality of discovering, there's still just this lull. And the thing about transition, the thing that we have to understand about transition is there has to be a pulling up. Wait, there has to be a planting. 
wait. And so the pulling up is the season that got you into this place, right? That dumped you into this place that got you here. And then there was this wait because we had to come out of here, you know, usually with some sort of crisis, something was going on. And so now then the planting, anytime you plant, right? There, there's a, there's a wait for that harvest to come into full maturation, right? And so it's in that waiting, it's transition has a, has, there's a lot of components that's happening in, in terms of transition. And a lot of it's just kind of making sure all the stuff is out, right? All the ideologies, even if it's, even if it's God planted, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. How can I say this? Even if it's God planted, your life is a field, God planted, but God decides this field now is going to be used to harvest a different type. So you were once corn. Now he's saying you're no longer corn. Corn is not going to come up here anymore. A whole different, the ground is still the ground. The planting is still the planting. The watering is still the watering. The harvesting is still the harvesting, but there's going to be a different crop here. And so even during times, if we're changing crops, you have to let the ground rest. You can't go from one crop to the other crop. You got to make sure because why? Because sometimes seeds from all planting, they don't come up right away. And when they do come up, they come up deformed. They come up wild. Sometimes they'll mix with a weed and it'll, it'll breed together and bring forth something else. So we gotta pull up and then we gotta wait and then we gotta let the ground rest before we begin to plant the new crop. And then here's the thing, the new crop may have a different cycle than the old crop. So where the harvest was in spring, now the harvest is gonna be in fall. So it's a different type of market, it's a different type of expectation, it's a different habit of harvest, it's a whole different thing. And so you had to understand what it's like to harvest. You had to understand what it's like for God to plant and to pluck up and to pull and, and for, for markets to come and to eat of the fruit of your life that God planted. But now the, the ground has, has been used and it's just time for a different crop here. That's going to serve a different people. That's going to have a different season. And so you've just been in that, that lull. You've just been in that, that transition. The transition is over. I'm talking about spiritual the transition is over. The transition is over. And so even as you've been going out into your day and, and, and even if you've been waking up at odd hours that you usually don't wake up at, God is speaking to you. He is shaking you. There is getting ready to come a shaking. And I'm not talking about like some bad, like shaking the bottom of your life is going to fall out. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a shaking to your life where God is getting ready to reveal himself to you in such a manner that has not been revealed inside of your lineage before. He's setting you up to carry the weight of this revelation. Everybody could not be Daniel. Everybody couldn't be Daniel. Daniel had to be Daniel because he was able to carry the weight of a revelation we're still unpacking into this day. Everybody couldn't be John the Baptist. Right? He was able to carry the weight of the mantle of what he was supposed to do. And so there's a waiting. There is a period in that transition. And so sometimes we think, oh, God's not speaking to me. Oh, you know, you look at new believers or you look at other people and it's like they're having a party, you know, and you're still doing, you're still praying, you're still all these things, but it's that fire. Like it's there, but it's just kind of chilling. You know, it's just kind of chilling. And you desire to be on fire, but the fire is just kind of chilling. It's kind of chilling. And you read it and you pray it and you fast it and you give it and you love it and you do it and you serve it. But the fire is just, it's because you're in transition with him. Hallelujah. And so I'm telling you, the crowning, for those of y'all who us have had babies, the crowning, the the dilation for the crowning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The crowning, we 
talk about crowns, we talk about His Majesty, we talk about crowns, we talk about kingdom, we talk about crowns, we talk about the king, the crowning of you birthing out through prayer, through declaration. When you speak in the days, the months, and the years to come, you're going to be speaking from this place of identity, understanding that my voice is wrapped in a glory, that my gifts are wrapped in a glory, that my identity is the mandate, right? The identity that I could have because it's found in the soul, right? Our identity is wrapped up in our soul. So I take my identity and I'm casting it to God in worship. And so I'm understanding the mandate is what I must become. So I'm not going to go back and forth with God anymore. I pray this is making sense. I'm not going to go back and forth with God anymore about what I am and what I'm not. God, you're the one who, who is, who fashioned this. You're the one who put function to this. And so I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. I pray y'all see this. The enemy, the enemy gets us so good when God is saying, I'm availing and in the me availing myself to you, I am putting definition to you. And you're going to understand so much more about your life and it's going to root you and it's going to seat you and cause you to be unmovable in some things, right? Because you're going to have full understanding or a better understanding of what's going on because you understand this is what I was poured out to do. So the enemy gets us because he'll 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 have us playing patty cake with oh not me false humility oh God who am I? And then the enemy will show you things that you did. You did that. Why would God use you? Why would God use you? Why would God use you? Why why wouldn't God use me? I fit the criteria. I fit the criteria. Why wouldn't he use me? And so that's just got to be, that's got to be, you know what I'm saying? It is written. He used Rahab. Boom. There you go. It is written. There was a prostitute who was the watchman on the wall. There was a prostitute who was the watchman on the wall. She was in a position to see. God put her in a position, even though she was a prostitute. And she was engrafted in. She's a part of the lineage of Christ. So, hey, it is written he used Rahab. It is written he used Rahab. That's just period, point blank. When the enemy starts holding up pictures in front of you about what you did and why you can and what's wrong with you and blah, 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 it is written. He used Rahab. Listen, because I don't want to be on here all night. I, I was talking to Angela, I think, earlier today, and we were talking kind of about this. If you could get this, and certainly if you're newer to some things, newer to functioning and flowing, you know, you, the gift is the gift is the gift is a gift of your mantle with that. And it belongs to the Holy Spirit, and now you belong to the Father. And I tell this story of when, you know, when you're walking under, you know, mantles and mandates, but you don't know yet. And nobody's telling you, and you just kind of all willy nilly out here. The warfare is at its worst there. Why? Because you don't have any clue, and you could go either way. Either way, meaning I could walk into it or I could back away from it, and I could just be a bench warmer out here in these streets, right? Love Jesus, but I ain't never gonna do nothing for him. Love Jesus, but I ain't never gonna tell nobody about him. Love Jesus, but I'm still gonna go to church, sit in the back, and I'll be like, yes, I am one of the. 144,000. Anyway, so when I had started, you know, walking back with God in my um, early 20s, then this is why it's so important to understand why you went through some of the things that you went through. And when you understand, when you get angry about some of the things that you went through, and you make it a, your, you make it a point to know that God brought you through this so that you could see. And when you see that cycle being perpetrated in somebody else's life, you stop the cycle. And so when I was in my early 20s, I started walking back with God. I told the story before, you know, I was uh, 
club managing and bartending uh, like 24 hours on Saturday. And then on Sunday, the Holy Spirit would just drive me to church. Like, I mean, I was, I just had to go to church. I would not go home. I would not take a shower. I would not change the clothes. I was wet. I mean, 24 hours. And I'm going to step up into 10 a.m. service. <laughs> and I did. And I was faithful. I was smelly, but I was faithful. Nobody messed with me for one year. I showed up for one year. I sat in the same pew for one year and nobody said anything to me. Not hello. Now, I mean, I understand. Listen, I get it. This is odd. We got this kid who's coming in here who just literally really did step out of the club. Smells like smoke and some alcohol. But nevertheless, I was a kid. So I got all of these adults, I got all these people who won't even speak to me. And then later on, they tell me, girl, I was over there like, girl, I was like, God, get a hold of her. God, I hope she understands this. My dad was a pastor. So my understanding of the scripture was never a problem. So it wasn't, God, I hope she can understand what the bishop is, you know, preaching. The enemy, while I was standing there trying to worship, was telling me for 12 Sundays straight, the whole entire two hour, two and a half hour, this is back in the day, three hour service, they're going to come and they're going to ask you to leave because they're going to see right through you. You are evil and you are demonic. So I'm standing there in the house of God. The place I needed to be, the place that was best for me, the place that was going to keep me, I'm standing in the house of God, warring on my own. I'm trying. And because I look different, smell different, clearly there were some things going on. I was in the warfare of my life in the pew. In the pew. So, you know, when we go places, like when I go places, uh, when I, you know, go to church, when I'm visiting, when I'm, you know, whatever, I, don't, I like to sit in the back of the church so I can catch who's struggling. Where's the warfare? I got to go through that so that I would remember and I can move my little tail and sit beside you and I can hold your hand. And you have no idea what this woman is doing. I'm gonna go out of my way to love on you and to hug on you. I don't care if your hair is 50 shades of blue, purple, green, yellow, orange. You got earrings hanging out your nose. You done came, you we clearly you in some alternative lifestyles. You're in the place you need to be. Let me love you and let God edit you. Right? So I don't know how we got on that tangent. But anyway, anyway. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this revelation. We thank you, God, for the, the oh, because we were, I, I remember now, thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the revelation of magistrate. I thank you, Father, for the dream that you gave me tonight and what I see in the revelation upon that dream. I decree and declare it upon your people that this is the season where they are birthing beautiful words. Come here, Naphtali. <laughs> Hallelujah. The blessing of Naphtali. Hallelujah. High and let loose to producing beautiful words. We bless you, Father, that these your people are producing, they are speaking, they are constructing, that they shall see the wind of the let there be glory upon their words. Hallelujah. I bless you, God, that this is the season where they have to struggle within themselves to get out a phrase, to get out a word, to get out a prayer, that that season has now been broken. Thank you, God, for the season of transition. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be, to, to be, uh, have a prolonged, um, uh, prolonged interaction with this season so that we would remember and we will be able to coax people out. Thank you, God, that we are walking in the breaker anointing. I thank you, God, that your people will come in contact with other people who are struggling with speaking, who are struggling with prayer, who are struggling in identity, and they will speak a word. 
Hallelujah. I had another dream last night. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to go into it. But I, I, it was, it was deliverance. And so there was a separation and there was a strong man. That was good, good stuff was happening in one person. And I didn't yell at the person. All I said was in Jesus name. I whispered it. I whispered it. And that demon, that strong man came out of that in the dream. So anyway, I'm not going there. So God, I thank you that this will be a season where it will not be hard. That the signs that follow the believer, not the signs that follow the apostle, not the signs that follow the prophet, not the signs that follow the teacher, not the signs that follow the evangelist, but the signs that follow the believer. I thank you, God, that they are walking solidly in these signs. I thank you that this nation in particular, the UK in particular, we shall see signs, wonders, and miracles break out everywhere because there is a remnant, <laughs> hallelujah, that understand the magistrate of signs, wonders, and miracles because with that comes a word of wisdom, with that comes a word of knowledge, and so Father... I thank you that we are not allowing companies of people to dwell in safety and to dwell in quietness and really they are tracing and they are going to their own ruin. Thank you, Father, that the word of righteousness to overcome ruin for people and people groups is in the mouths of your people. And thank you, God, that signs, wonders, and miracles. Follow these, your people. Thank you, God. It's not about how great, how loud, how many big words I can use. It's not about quoting Greek or Hebrew. It is about being a believer. We are not leaning upon our own strength. We're not leaning to our own understanding, but we are leaning unto the understanding of the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of the Father. And so we don't know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit has room to groan and signs, wonders, and miracles follow the believers who know and that they know and have an understanding, hallelujah, that the groaning of the Holy Spirit it is enough. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you for the fire coming to the lives of your people. The fire that is not just chilling anymore, but there is a fire. There is a shaking. There is awakening that is coming upon your people in the name of Jesus. For every person that said, yeah, that's me. I've been in this transition. I know that there's more. I'm like, God, when, what next with you? Not lusting for a place, not lusting for a microphone, not lusting for a pulpit, but saying, God, I want to do you in the earth. I want to bring my peace of the highway. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you that where discouragement had been trying to creep in, where, you know, thoughts of inadequacy or is this it was trying to creep in. We thank you, God, that this is the season for the explosion inside of the believer, the explosion in the believer's life to come upon us in the name of Jesus hallelujah and so even starting tonight for the people who lift their hands and say yes Lord just like we did last night I thank you God that there will be another level there will be another layer of the uncovering of the dream of the Lord in terms of calling dreams that there will be another layer there will be another layer of uncovering and calling dreams Hallelujah. And so every day I'm going to run ahead and pray. And so, Father, I'm standing in tomorrow because I'm seated in you. And so, therefore, I am not held by time. And so, since I'm seated in Christ Jesus, in him li I live, move, and have my very being, I pray from inside of the person of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, as your people wake up on what will be called tomorrow by the lips of man, that every calling dream that calls that you caused to come tonight every calling dream thank you God that it will be easily interpreted I stand in your presence and I'm calling and I'm asking my God for wisdom Sophia one of the uh, uh, definitions means to the ability to interpret dreams I thank you God that they will have the ability in the dream to interact with angels and to know what you are saying and that there was a yes, Lord, in the night vision. There was a yes, Lord, in the dream of the Lord. And when they wake up, this yes, Lord, on this side of day will extend until tomorrow. And that they will be moving in the yes. They will be moving in the signs, the wonders of the yes. Thank you, God, for extension of assignment. What other people don't want to do, God, we're saying we'll do it. What other people don't want to go, God, we're saying we'll go. What other people have laid down and said enough, God, we're saying no, it's not enough. Hallelujah. And so, Father, thank you for calling us again. Thank you for speaking again. Thank you, God, for uncovering another layer of why we were poured out into the earth to do your 
work, oh God, to do your will, oh God, to accomplish your good pleasure in us, oh God. And so we lift our hands and we say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I bless you right now. Hallelujah. In the courts of heaven, I thank you for the release of angels over there tomorrow. I thank you, God, for the release of angels in the dreams tonight. I thank you, God, that there will be reveler, uh, angels of revelation. There will be angels of warring. And when the infiltration of the enemy tries to come, that he will be met with a wall. That it will be met with a wall. That the only covenant that is set up by God is the covenant of you, God, tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so your people are saying yes. We're saying yes beyond our intellect. We're saying yes because God, you've already released it. God, we're saying yes to what you've already said is the providential will of what we're to be flowing. And we say yes to the call. We say yes to being qualified in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, where people are dealing with the whole qualified piece, am I qualified? Am I qualified? Am I qualified? Well, baby, you've been justified and baby, you've been called and baby, hallelujah, you've been qualified. You've been qualified not by your goodness. You've been qualified not by your holiness. You've been qualified not by the hand of man. You've been qualified by the heart of Jesus. He died so that you could be qualified. He was raised so that you could be qualified and so we step into our qualification <laughs> hallelujah we move up into we break through hallelujah the, the, the that which would be standing between us and moving freely and unhindered in the boundaries that is boundless in you and so father thank you that tonight some people will stop going back and forth with qualification they will say yes lord you qualified me according to your word According to your good pleasure, according to what makes you happy, according to your mandate, according to your decree, according to your scroll, according to the books of heaven, according, 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 hallelujah, before the foundations of the earth was set, before the foundations of the earth was hewed out and drawn out, we were qualified, hallelujah. And calm down. And so, Father, we just thank you that tonight that fight stops. It quotes Sunday me crochet because I'm hearing the Lord say that that's been holding up some of the fire because what is on you? What God is causing you to birth? Sometimes you draw back and feel like, oh, why? No, no, no. And God is saying, let that go because that is not of me, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so God, every thought, every thought pattern, every pattern, every, every paradigm, we let it go in your presence. So God, you can for real, for real, for real use us. However you want to use us, whenever you want to use us, whatever that looks like, we thank you for the most epic adventure. This side of glory is on this side, on the next side on the other side of today. Hallelujah. And so God, you get the glory. You get the honor. You be magnified. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Amen. I didn't mean to yell at y'all. <laughs> amen. 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 So, amen. Read the next chapter tomorrow. And read through the whole chapter that we did. Read the whole chapter. And then we'll be on tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our last day. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Whew. God is good. God is so good. Hmm. So good. So good. Thank you, God. Some of you guys have just come out of transition. Just come out of transition. Come out of transition. Huh, funny. Come out of transition. Jesus. You about to take off. You about to fly. You about to do things that you never was ever on your grid. Because now unto him who's able to blow your mind. And how he really wants to use you. Now unto him who's able to blow your mind. Yep. Be coming out of it, Miss Patrice coming out of it. And when you, every time you see that 11, Miss Patrice, you just say, yes, Lord. You just say, yes, Lord, to the, to the shaking. You say, yes, Lord, to the awakening. You say, yes, Lord. You say, yes, Lord. I love you guys. You say, yes. Every time you see it, you say, yes, Lord. I see 11s. I mean, wake up almost to the hour and 633. 
You say, yes, Lord. You say, yes, Lord. You say, yes, Lord. Pass your intellect. You ain't even got to try to figure it out. Just say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of the transition, but I'm coming out locked and fully loaded. Hallelujah. Miss Patrice, you're not going to deal with this inadequacy anymore. You're not going to deal with, you know, um, showing up. You, you show up so vibrantly in certain settings. And then in other settings, you feel you, you dim. And it's you that's doing the dimming. And God is saying he's, finna, he's getting ready to bridge that thing. And you're going to come out in both realms fully locked and loaded. Miss Patrice. <laughs> Hallelujah. The signs and wonders that are assigned to your life. May they blow your own mind. May it be written upon your books, Hanio Sokoshe, that before the e this year ends, you will have testimonies of laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seeing them recover. Not because you're so big and bad, not because you're so glorified and gifted, but because God said so. Because God said so. Because God said so. And so, Father, we thank you for transitioning her out of the old place. And thrusting her into the marvelous light, the marvelous knowledge. Hallelujah. Deeper. Hallelujah. Than what she's ever expected. Because you can, Father, in Jesus' name. All right, guys. I love you. For real, we do get off. Amen. All right. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.